The Scout's a generalist class that uses his high speed and damage to overwhelm his enemies. He can attack or defend objectives with ease, with his only weakness being his small health pool. In base game TF2, the Scout's a top tier, no questions asked. He's meta in 6s and the best class for a 1v1. But how well does he hold up in medieval mode, a game type where everyone loses their guns? In medieval mode, he's not as strong as he is in the base game. He's more of a support class, helping capture points and being a nuisance to the enemy. The scout loses his scatter gun, his main source of burst damage. Instead, he's stuck with his melees and a few secondaries. This begs the question, how good are these weapons? I'll be ranking these weapons in a tier list. These weapons are going to be ranked based off of how effective they are in a 1v1, the synergy of the weapons within a loadout, and how well the weapons perform with a team. One last note is that random crits will be taken into account since every medieval server runs them. Let's go. The Criticola, once activated, grants the user mini crits for 8 seconds. The drawback of this weapon is that the user gets marked for death as soon as they attack, which lasts for 5 seconds. Basically, the scout both deals and receives mini crit damage. In base TF2, it's not as bad since you have a gun and you're able to dodge, but in medieval, you have to be in melee distance with the enemy. So in order to avoid the inevitable 88 damage an enemy is going to hit you with, you have to somehow avoid every swing while hitting all of yours. The scout dealing mini crits at stock deals 47 damage compared to its usual 35. It's only 12 more damage in exchange for lowering the scout's effective health to 92. The criticola has a high risk and low reward type of playstyle. In a 1v1, this weapon makes fights finish faster, but usually not in the scout's favor. Being marked for death signals the enemies to focus you because you're just an easy kill. The scout has pitiful melee damage, and mini crits just aren't going to help his damage output to match the likes of literally every other class in the game. It just makes the scout more fragile than he already is. This is the scout's worst weapon in medieval mode, easy D tier. Much like the base game, the Sandman is underwhelming at best. In exchange for minus 15 max health, you get a ball that you could hit to enemies and slow them down. The weapon is identical in damage to the stock bat but gaining a ball isn't worth the 15 HP, although it is a long range option in a close quarters type of game. The slowdown really only benefits your teammates that are close to the enemy that you hit, assuming you even landed the ball. Other than the supportive use of the ball, you yourself won't get too much use out of it unless you pair it with the cleaver. Without the ball, you're just a stock scout with less health, almost a straight downgrade. This leaves the Sandman as the first weapon in C tier. This weapon just catfishes you with how cool it looks, but all the sun on his stick gives you is minus 25% damage. Sure, it deals crits on burning players and you get 25% fire resistance, but this isn't your extinguisher or fire protection for chest plate. It has a base damage of 26, and with crits it deals 79. The only problem is that fire damage is rare in this mode. The only way you could set enemies on fire, just like in real life, is using the sharpened volcano fragment or the flaming huntsman arrows. The fire resistance doesn't come up at all in regular gameplay, since a scout surviving a burning huntsman arrow is very rare. As for crits on burning players, you need to find an opponent that's even burning, and a teammate that could deal fire damage. You need to rely on your teammates to let you actually use this weapon optimally. Even if you manage to find a burning player, they'll most likely already be at death's door, where you would have already killed them with any other melee, or your teammates will clean up the kill for you instead. The sound on a stick is a very niche weapon. Its upsides never come into play, and its damage penalty just haunts you like an embarrassing memory at 1am. This just leaves the weapon in C tier. <laughs> this weapon's 1v1 potential is neutered with a base damage of 12 per swing. But its alt fire, the ornament, is the draw of the weapon. Being able to harass enemies from a distance might be the supportive edge to help your teammates. But edging is all you're going to be doing with this weapon, because once the enemies target you, you'll see how their health is in the death cam and how close you were to killing them. Unfortunately, the bleed damage isn't too great either. Health packs are littered around the map, and if you hit a Demo Knight, which is like almost the entire enemy team most likely, they could just charge to remove the bleed and remove you from the server. Overall, just another underwhelming weapon, but not the worst. That rounds out C tier for weapons. <laughs> this weapon sucks on a 1v1, so what's it doing up in B tier? It only deals 9 damage and 26 on crits. The only point to using this weapon is being a support scout. He marks important targets for death and relies on his teammates to clean them up. This is the same thing as the scout using an orb of discord from overwatch. You basically become a backseat driver with this weapon since you have no way of self defense unless you equip the cleaver. 
Because you're a backseat driver, you have to rely on your team to get kills for you. But the potential with the teamwork is the only reason that it's keeping it up here in B tier. One strategy to use with this weapon is to use the Mad Milk with it. You could basically become Zenyatta from Overwatch since you can mark people for death and you could throw milk at them so that your team heals. If you have coordination with your team, this weapon's actually pretty fun. But if you're playing solo, this weapon's just praying that your team helps you, and just like Relife Prayer, you're not going to get an answer. For the first weapon in A tier, the Bat does 35 base damage and deals 105 with crits. It swings every half second, with no upsides, no downsides, it just does its job, collects its paycheck, and clocks out. As for the fish, it's technically a direct upgrade. It has the same stats as stock, except every successful hit you land shows up in the kill feed. You could use this to your advantage to see if the spy that you hit is using the dead ringer or not. Other than that, it's like the stock bat. Not overwhelming nor underwhelming, just whelming. Identical to stock in terms of damage, the Candy Cane's only downside is 25% more explosive vulnerability in exchange for dropping a health kit on kill. The explosive vulnerability barely comes into play in medieval mode, since the only explosive that you'll encounter is the Demo Man's Oracle Caver. The main draw of this weapon, however, is the second health pack dropped on kill. In case you didn't know, in medieval mode, every player that dies drops a small health kit. With the Candy Cane equipped though, every kill that the scout gets drops two small health kits. This could be a double-edged sword, however. Sure, you can convert the corpse of an enemy into a medium health kit, but the enemy team could also take advantage of the extra health. The Candy Cane and the Stock Bat are interchangeable. If you find that you need more health after a battle, equip the Candy Cane. If you don't want to risk the enemy using your health packs, use Stock. Overall, a solid weapon in A tier. The Bonk Atomic Punch grants the scout 8 seconds of invincibility, however he can't attack during this period. This weapon is super useful if you use the Boston Basher to hit yourself up to the castle walls, and if you need a safe way to get some health. It's also good for escaping undesirable situations, like if you're about to be ganged up on or if you're about to lose a fight. It's like the Dead Ringer with extra steps, you can't go wrong with this item. If you don't miss it all, the Boston Basher is a direct upgrade. This is unrealistic though. It's like saying the key to winning every fight is to knock a hit and hit all of your shots. Its stats are that if you hit an enemy, they bleed for 5 seconds. If you miss, then you hit yourself and you deal bleed damage to yourself. You're bound to miss with this weapon. But like I said earlier with the Rap Assassin, health packs litter the map. Position yourself around them before you engage in a fight as insurance. The bleed damage you inflict on an enemy does 40 damage over time if they don't get health. With a base hit of 35, you'll be dealing 75 damage at the max if your enemy doesn't find a way to stop the bleeding. That's without crits. However, the max damage you could do to yourself is 58 damage. Keep that in mind before you decide to swing. This weapon encourages a high risk, high reward type of playstyle. One final note on this weapon is the ability to bash your jump. While its use is to scale the castle, it is an option if you want to be a more flank oriented scout. Very solid weapon in our last weapon in A tier. My personal favorite scout melee in this mode, the Atomizer, while active, grants an extra mid-air jump and mini crits while airborne. The negatives of this weapon are a minus 15% damage penalty and a 50% slower deploy speed. The latter doesn't come up too often, but it is a notable downside. It has a base damage of 30, mini crits with 40, and deals 89 on crit. The only difference in terms of base damage between this and stop is 5 damage, basically non-existent. The main reason you want to use this weapon is the triple jump. The maneuverability you get with this weapon lets you climb the castle with no expense on your health. It lets you stall control points for your team, and it lets you juke enemies with your extra jump. Getting the mini crits isn't hard either. Just jump before the battle and swing twice. Both swings will be mini crits. After that, you can dance around on top of your enemy with your jumps to disorient them. This weapon is super fun to use. Easy S tier. Amid to long range damage dealing secondary, the flying guillotine deals 50 damage on impact and 40 bleed damage over time for a total of 90 damage if left bleeding. An excellent harassment tool that'll cripple enemies and clear control points. It has a fast recharge time, so it could easily be spammed to help control objectives, start fights, or give help to teammates in a fight. A long range harassment tool easily leaves it as the second best tool for Scout to use in Medieval, leaving its mark in S tier. The Scout's best secondary in Medieval mode, the Med Milk. Once thrown at a single target or a group, any interaction the victim engages in, they'll be at a severe disadvantage. Being able to heal mid-fight is powerful, 
and could easily tip the scales in your team's favor. It's like Halo with the Black Eye Skull, since you need to beat the life out of enemies to heal your own. It benefits the entire team, and even if you use it in a 1v1, it's a good way to start fights, heal up mid-fight, and get a few frags when you probably should have died. This is easily the scout's best weapon in medieval mode. And here's the tier list for scout's weapons in medieval mode. Overall, the scout's a mid-tier in medieval mode. He's too fragile, half of his weapons are situational at best, and he has pitiful damage output. He shines in supporting his team though, through his long-range harassment with bleed, marking for death, or insane healing. The scout has a support role where you mainly rack up assists instead of kills. He's mostly used to capture objectives, flank, and be a pest to the enemy and hold them off until his teammates could get in to help. Don't underestimate the scout though, he could still overwhelm you with his movement and escape if things look dire. Thank you guys for watching, I expect more in the future. This is my very first properly edited YouTube video, and obviously this series is inspired by Wheezy's MBM uh, weapon series. But uh, yeah, thank you guys for watching.